The moon is the only space object visited by man. On July 20th, 1969, the Apollo 11 spacecraft landed on its surface. Neil Armstrong became the first man who walked on the moon. Together with Buzz Aldrin, they spent about two and a half hours on the Earth's natural satellite. Preparation for the flight took several years, and all of the astronauts' equipment weighed more than 80 kilograms, or about 176 pounds. So what if you found yourself on the moon without all this protective equipment or a protective suit? Would a person be able to survive on the moon for at least 30 seconds? By the way, do you know how many people have visited the moon? You'll learn the correct answer at the end of the video. So let's imagine that you're on the moon. You have moon dust under your feet and a black sky with stars overhead. But you have no time to admire the scenery. Unfortunately, there's no air for you to breathe. The moon has practically no atmosphere compared to Earth's, which is 10 trillion or 10 to the 13th power times denser. The moon's gas content is considered to be a vacuum. In fact, the density of the atmosphere of the moon can be compared with the density of the uppermost layers of the Earth's atmosphere, where the ISS, the International Space Station, is located. But there is good news. In such conditions, you won't die instantly. You have about 15 seconds before you pass out from hypoxia. This is how much time your body will have to use the remaining oxygen in your blood to sustain brain function. But a lack of air is far from our only concern. You've probably seen memes of the blobfish, which is called the saddest creature on Earth. In fact, it's a drop in pressure that makes it so sad. This fish lives at great depths, and there it has a very normal look. But when it's caught, due to the large difference in pressure, it inflates. On the moon, you risk becoming a sad blobfish. Since there's practically no atmosphere there, the pressure is extremely low. On Earth, a column of air with a mass of about 15 to 20 tons presses the entire surface of an adult's body. However, we don't notice this. Firstly, the air pillar presses evenly from all sides. And secondly, there's also air inside of our bodies. And the internal pressure is equal to the atmosphere. But due to low pressure on the moon, nitrogen dissolved in the blood and tissues will be released in the form of bubbles in your blood. Your body, starting with your arms and legs, will swell like a balloon. But you won't burst. The elasticity of your skin will protect you from tearing. But don't try to hold your breath. At such a low pressure, you could face the same problem as divers when rising too fast to the surface your lungs could burst. A better idea, on the contrary, is to exhale. Moreover, under such conditions, water will boil regardless of temperature. This means that the liquid in open areas, skin, eyes, will evaporate. You'll feel how the saliva boils on your tongue. But the blood will remain liquid. The walls of your vessels will protect it from boiling. We can't exactly call the temperature on the moon comfortable. During the day, the surface warms up to 127 degrees Celsius, that's 260 Fahrenheit. And at night, the temperature can drop to minus 173 degrees Celsius, that's minus 279 Fahrenheit. Moreover, a day on the moon is equivalent to 29 Earth days. Spending 14 and a half Earth days in light and the same in darkness. Therefore, like Apollo 11, it's better to choose dawn for a visit to the moon when the surface is not so cold but hasn't had time to warm up too much. But even if you find yourself on the moon at night, you won't freeze instantly. There are three types of heat transfer, conduction, convection, and radiation. In the vacuum of space, there's only one kind, thermal radiation. So you'll lose heat very slowly. But you're not just in space. You're standing on the surface of the moon, 
which means that there's another kind of heat transfer in addition to thermal radiation, conduction. But the surface of the moon doesn't conduct heat very well, so you won't turn into ice, at least not in 30 seconds. If you find yourself on the moon in the afternoon, then within a few seconds, instead of tanning, you'll get burned by solar radiation. On Earth, the ozone layer protects us from the dangerous ultraviolet radiation of the sun. And on the moon, you won't have such protection. In addition, it will be unbearable to stand on the hot surface. Also, the natural satellite of the Earth has a very weak magnetic field. This means that once on the moon, you'll be attacked by streams of solar and galactic cosmic rays. According to scientists, the approximate level of radiation on the moon throughout the year ranges from 100 to 380 millisiever. You would receive about one millisiever by getting three chest x-rays. That is, if you stay on the moon for a year, you'd receive the same dose of radiation as if you had received from 300 to 1,140 x-rays. In the future, you would face big health problems, but not in those 30 seconds. If only your stay on Earth's satellite doesn't coincide with the next cycle of solar activity, which happens every 11 years. During that time, flares on the sun emit a particularly large number of x-rays and gamma rays. In this situation, you're very likely to die instantly. Another trouble that awaits you on the moon is dust called regolith. This is where Neil Armstrong left an imprint of his boot. Since there's no wind on the moon, it has survived to this day. And if you had more than 30 seconds, you could find it. True, you definitely need a spacesuit. Without one, moon dust carries mortal danger for you. Have you noticed the huge number of craters on the moon? These are traces of meteorites falling. The active bombardment of the moon ended 3.87 billion years ago. Nevertheless, meteorites still fall on its surface. Sometimes they are tiny, and sometimes they are incredibly huge. For example, in 2014, Spanish astronomers recorded the collision of a meteorite weighing more than 400 kilograms, or 882 pounds. If you find yourself near the place of the fall of such a giant, then your 30 seconds on the moon will expire much earlier. When meteorites fall, regolith forms as a result of crushing of lunar rocks under vacuum. Its particles are very small, ranging in size from 0.03 to 1 millimeter. That's 0.001 to 0.04 inches. However, they're very sharp and can easily damage your lungs. Moon dust is constantly bombarded by solar wind particles, which is why it acquires a positive electric charge. Therefore, it seems to rise above the surface of the moon. So regolith will cause you eye irritation and sinusitis. So your 30 seconds on the moon have expired. These were not the most pleasant seconds in your life, but the good news is that you're still alive. But what if you stay there longer? Without a spacesuit, in the end, the lack of air can kill you. Oxygen starvation will occur and then damage to your brain cells. But if after 90 seconds of being on the moon, you're able to return to livable conditions, then there is a high probability you will survive. But if you want to take the same long walk on the moon as the American astronauts, then you still need reliable protection. NASA just introduced a new lunar spacesuit in which the Americans hope to return to the moon. It weighs 91 kilograms, or about 200 pounds. But since the gravity of the moon is six times weaker than on Earth, the developers are sure that it will be comfortable to move in. Astronauts will not have to jump on the surface of the moon like their predecessors. They can literally walk. The new suit will also protect against moon dust and radiation. It's designed for moonwalks lasting up to eight hours. The Americans hope to fly in these protective suits to the moon by the year 2024. And in 2028, the first base should be built on the moon. NASA's new lunar program is called the Artemis program. 
And finally, the answer to the question, how many people have visited the moon? In the period from 1969 to 1972, under the Apollo program, six flights were performed with a landing on the moon. Twelve people visited its surface. The longest walk on the moon was made by Gene Cernan and Harrison Schmidt during the last Apollo flight. It lasted seven hours and 36 minutes. And astronaut Alan Shepard was even able to play golf there. As you can see, Despite the harsh conditions, the Moon remains the most hospitable object in the solar system. And perhaps walks on Earth's satellite in the near future will become a reality. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell to receive notifications of new videos right away.